Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deep in Science lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book and a pen and a worksheet which you can download in the link below. In your book I'd like to get down today's title which is Gas Exchange and for your starter activity I'd like you to answer these two questions. What happens to your breathing when you run and why do those changes need to occur? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video and when you finish we'll go through the answers together. Have you got an answer? So when you are exercising, the rate at which your breathing needs to increase. This is to increase the amount of oxygen which is being delivered to the lungs, which in turn increases the amount of oxygen which is being delivered to the blood, and then that will increase the amount of oxygen being delivered to the tissues and the muscles that need it while you're exercising. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the differences between inhaled and exhaled air. We're going to recall the process of inhalation and exhalation. And we're going to explain how the structures of the respiratory system are adapted for their function. First, I want you to put one hand on your chest and one hand just below. And I want you to take a deep breath in. And while you do that, I want you to pay attention to which direction the chest moves. The chest moves outwards and upwards. This is an inhalation. Next, I want you to put both hands on your chest again, and I want you to take a deep breath out. Again, paying attention to which direction the chest moves. The chest moves inwards and down. This is an exhalation. It is this combination of the inhalation and the exhalation which makes up one breath. Your breathing rate is how many breaths you take every minute. And we're gonna calculate our breathing rate. With your hands on your chest, we are going to count the number of breaths you take in 15 seconds. Now, because 15 seconds is only a quarter of a minute, when we're finished, we're going to multiply our answer by four. Okay, we've got 15 seconds on our clock. I want you to put both hands on your chest and watch the screen carefully because when it says stop, that's when we're going to stop counting. Are you ready? Hands on your chest and start. and stop. Have you got a result? The next thing we're going to do is multiply our answer by four, and then I'd like to complete this sentence down at the bottom. My breathing rate is, then insert your answer, breaths per minute. Now everyone's breathing rate is a little bit different. If you want to compare yours to other people's, then you can put your breathing rate down in the comments below. Now I want to talk about the air that we breathe in when we do that inhalation. 78% of it is nitrogen. Only 21% is oxygen, and then the other 1% of gases is everything else that's in the atmosphere, including that carbon dioxide, which only makes up 0.04% of the atmosphere. Now let's compare that to the air that we breathe out. The amount of nitrogen stays the same at 78%. The amount of oxygen has gone down from 21% to 16%, so that must be being used by the body. The other gases has increased by 1%, so we must be generating a waste product. And now we've got a new slice of our pie, which is carbon dioxide, which has increased from 0.04% to 4% and is the main waste product of the body. There is evidence for what this other waste product is in this other gases. If you think about what happens when you breathe onto a piece of glass or a mirror, you get that condensation formed. That condensation is there because the water vapor in your breath is condensing. And with that in mind, what I'd like to do next is have a go at these four questions on your worksheet. If you haven't got the worksheet, don't worry about it. You can write down the question and then write your answer underneath. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video. And when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So which gas from the atmosphere is used by the human body? Well, that's going to be our oxygen because it decreased from 21% to 16%, which is a waste product. Looking at this diagram, it's the carbon dioxide and the other gases. Suggesting some evidence of what this other waste product could be. Well, we know it's water vapor, so it's that condensation on the glass. And even on a cold day, you can see it when you breathe out. So using some data from the charts to explain which of the gases aren't used by the body. The obvious one is nitrogen because it stays the same at 78%. But we don't use carbon dioxide either. It's increased from 0.04% to 4%. We haven't used it. We've produced it. Same thing happens for the other gases. It's increased from 1% to 2%. We haven't used it. We've produced it. So now we've looked at the differences between inhaled and exhaled air. And we've recalled the process of inhalation and exhalation. 
Next, we need to explain how the structures of the respiratory system are adapted for their function. So starting at the very top, you've got your trachea, also known as the windpipe, and this trachea branches off into each lung through a bronchus. These bronchi then also have smaller branches called bronchioles, and at the end of these bronchioles, we have the alveoli. So when you breathe in that air from the atmosphere that contains that 21% oxygen, you are increasing the concentration of oxygen in the lung. And because the concentration of oxygen in the red blood cells is really, really low, the oxygen is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration in the alveoli to an area of low concentration in the red blood cells. There's something else happening here because the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood plasma is really high. And the concentration of carbon dioxide in the lung is low, remember, only 0.04%. And again, carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration from the blood plasma into the lung. Now, these two processes don't take turns. They happen at the same time. And we call this the gas exchange. And the lung is really well adapted for this gas exchange. You see, the wall for this alveoli is only one cell thick. Also, the wall for this capillary, this blood vessel, is also only one cell thick. This is going to increase the rate at which the gases can diffuse because it's got the smallest amount of distance to travel. Now, there is one more adaptation. It's about the shape of the alveoli. Now, I've got two lines here. Imagine they're both pieces of string. Which one's going to be longer? We can see that B is going to be longer because all we need to do is stretch it out. Looking at the shape of these alveoli, they're very similar to that of a bunch of grapes. Now, what that does is it increases the amount of surface area it has. And if you've got a larger surface area, that's going to increase the rate of the fusion. What I'd like you to do next is to explain how oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged at the lungs. Now, this question is worth six marks, so it's good to split it into two parts. You'll get three marks for explaining how oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood, and another three marks for explaining how carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood back into the alveoli. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and then when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answer? Okay, let's start with this oxygen. When you breathe in, there is an increased concentration of oxygen in the lung, but there's a really low concentration of oxygen in the red blood cells. So oxygen is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration in the lung to an area of low concentration in the red blood cells down its concentration gradient. Looking at this carbon dioxide then, there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood plasma, but there's a low concentration of carbon dioxide in the lung. Remember, only 0.04% which means the carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from an area of high concentration from the plasma to an area of low concentration in the lung, down its concentration gradient. So now we've explained how the structures of the respiratory system are adapted for their function. Next, I want to have a look at these two diagrams. We've got a normal alveoli here, and we've got an alveoli from a patient that has emphysema. I want you to use these two diagrams to suggest why people with emphysema become more out of breath when they're exercising. So think about the surface area and how is that going to affect our emphysema patient. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answer? So looking at the alveoli from the patient with emphysema, we can see that it's got a much smaller surface area. This means that the gas exchange is not going to be as efficient and so you're not going to get as much oxygen entering the blood. We've got one more task to finish before we wrap this lesson up and you get to choose what to do. You can either write a tweet about today's lesson, 140 characters max, and you can hashtag the keywords. You can write down two correct statements and one incorrect statement about today's lesson, or you can draw the most important thing that you've learned today. I hope you had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.